Hello, everyone. Welcome. Why so serious? To the Sons of Liberty podcast. It, it, it's a serious because it's a serious, serious time. Is it? A lot of serious things are going. This is serious. Okay. Russia is invading Ukraine. It serious, serious time. No jokes allowed. No comedy. No fun. <laughs> Cause we're all getting blown up in World War Three. Welcome to the podcast. It's me, oh, Kig yeah. and Akko. Season two is never happening. I will say that every time. It will never get old. And then there's yes. the, those other losers. You want to introduce yourselves? I again am a dirty D two casual, and I play Destiny two for a little bit. Uh, hold on. Uh, sorry, Sunny. Uh, uh, I'll give you a chance to speak, but I want to analyze that for a second. Cause you say all the time that you are a D two casual. But you are not a casual. You play this game every day. Every day. It is a full-time job for you, bro. How are you a casual? Uh, compared to what I used to play in terms of hours, I think I'm a casual. <sighs> every day. Every day. I don't have that much dedication. I just don't. Damn. Like, I would never grind my life away on a game every day. For years. That's just... It's just not something I would do. You should do it. It's fun. No! I don't think I will. Well, you're just not based, I guess. <laughs> Says the Destiny 2 player. <laughs> okay, Destiny and 2 then, is the best game in the world. We'll, we'll get to that. That's actually one of our topics. So that's very convenient. Uh, and then... Uh, the other one. Uh, the other one. Yeah. I'm Sunny. Yeah, Host I'm with the it. most, whatever, whatever. Just say your catchphrase. <laughs> you said it for me. I mean, hey. Best for last, baby. You know, uh, my mid. jokes are the most. Mid. And these, you know, snore festers over here that make y'all sleep. I'm here to save y'all. <laughs> Alright, just going with the fucking Tru podcast. Truly, you are, you are Atlas holding the world on your shoulders. <laughs> Okay, so, we've, we've got a lot to talk about today, because, first of all, we do not have a weekly Joe Biden slam, as I per mean... our usual record, because Joe Biden did it for us with his State of the Union address. Uh, Kaika, you know take it away. So Biden held his hour or so State of the Union that he was, of course... Late two, as per usual. <laughs> By how much? By a couple of minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's, uh... I mean, like, I'm just saying, he's always late to everything. You know, it's not a surprise. Everyone was expecting. But regardless, look, he's, he's he running helped. a few minutes behind. That's whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you're the president or anything, and you're trying to address. No, no. Yeah. It's it's just it's just Sleepy Joe. He's just, you know, he just wants to talk to everybody. That's he's our neighborhood person. grandpa. Exactly! <laughs> and he's running the country. And he's from Scranton, Pennsylvania. And he's running the country. <laughs> he doesn't do anything. <laughs> he just says that a lot. He just says, like, back in my day, my dad, who was born in Scranton, Pennsylvania, was a hard-working citizen. You know, like, he's not I, one right now. I mean, if, if you think about it. It's almost as if he forgot that he already said it already. <laughs> When you think about it, Trump did that similarly to that his father was a hard worker and that, you know, he only gave him a small loan, you know, the famous quote of a million dollars. You know, we could actually talk about that because I do want to talk about this for a second. A lot of people like to clown Trump, like saying, oh, the father gave him a small loan of a million dollars. Haha, funny, funny. It's funny. Don't get me wrong. But let's analyze Trump's situation for one second. He's Trump out received... of office. Why are we still talking about it? Hold on, this is important. I want to defend Trump. <laughs> okay. Important. Trump received a one million dollar loan and turned that into a multi billion dollar company. Let that sink in. Okay, let's get back to Joe Biden. Bro, but you think about swear. it, like you can't say that the million dollars didn't help him. Like no, it, it did. Someone with a did. dollar, but he paid it back because someone... it was a loan, right? So, and yeah, also, billion dollars is a large scale. Like, that's not twofold. That's, that's not threefold. That, that's four orders of magnitude. That is a lot of magnitude. So <laughs> I think people don't give Trump a lot of credit. Doesn't even know what magnitude means. Um, okay. Can I just say this, though, before we continue on? 
Yeah, for sure. If I had, if I had a nickel for every time there was this, like, you know, super maybe kind of successful, really rich guy who basically had the same copy-paste uh, backstory of starting from nothing and, you know, having this really hard-working family and, you know, making it big from nothing and then just basically owning their respective field. I'd have two nickels. And that's not much. But it's weird that it happened twice. You got Trump yeah. and you got Elon. I'm sure there are others, but think recently those are like the ones that come to mind. Especially because everybody really, really fucking hates Trump and Elon. It's to the point where they're like derangement syndromes associated with both. But we've been over that a lot. Uh, I don't know. It's just kind of weird that like, you know, there are these two super, super rich guys that basically have the exact same backstory, except one of them is African and the other one is, that's like the only difference. Hey, I mean, everyone wants to listen to a Rex, uh, a Rex for two Rex, a Rex, story, a Rex right? story. I get yeah. the appeal. I do. Right. But it's just, <laughs> no, I, I get where you're coming from. Um, but yeah, it's just the rags to riches. That's yeah. people want to hear. Okay, so back back to back to Resident Ch- Biden. Back to Joe. Back to Joe. Yeah, Resident Biden. So State of the Union happened just a couple minutes late, and there was a couple of things that are important. I thought the first I don't know, ten minutes was all right, like to the point where if Trump r- said that, I'd be like, okay, you know what? That's kind of a dub. So we're gonna. We're going to give Joe Biden a pass. And he was talking about the situation in Ukraine. Yeah. Talking about how the leaders there are very brave. But then, Joe Biden talks about how he is leading the world. No. Okay. No. But Joe Biden has been a step behind all of the European nations in terms of sanctions, in terms of helping the Ukrainians. And keep in mind... This is the European nations. So, like, right. the EU. Yeah, the people that under no circumstance want war. And we're somehow behind them. America with our $700 billion budget a year on the military. It's well, crazy. But, like, I don't think we should be jumping into war. I feel no, because like then we'd all fucking sense. die. Yeah. I don't know. We're just saying that it's ironic that the EU, you know, with how they are and their philosophy... Yeah. Like, like the globalist, is leading the way. The globalist yeah. neoliberals really beat us to our own game. It's kind of sad. It's because, like, they're right next to what's happening. We're not. No, no I, I get that. Right. But remember, not too long ago, there was a time where America was kind of the world's police, if you feel me. Right? We were the one, we were the world superpower that made sure that everybody got along, alongside NATO and the UN and whatever. Right? But it was America that was always leading the charge. Because we weren't afraid to get shit done. I and mean, then there was Vietnam. But still, m- most of the time, right, America was able to, when, you know, when shit got real, America was able to come in and solve the problem. Usually, without it, you know, um, <laughs> uh, breaking out into a full-out war... Except if they have oil, but that's kind of besides the point. Um, but now, we've... And, and I just said this, but I'm going to say it again. We've fallen behind the globalists in the European Union. That's kind of sad. <laughs> also, like, I wouldn't even say that... Saying that we are not in the region, kind of, or not, we're not right next to them, is a good excuse. Because we are the founders of NATO... Like, we are the people that specifically design a buttload of countries to come together and basically tell the Russians, fuck off. And yeah. if you do anything, we will I mean, defend ourselves to the highest degree. China too, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, Russia more so than China and, at the time. And, and, and North Korea, but, you know, that's yeah, that's just too. So it's kind of ironic that the Europeans are leading us, or leading Ukraine. Not no, Actually, it's bad. Leading us in helping Ukraine. There you yes, go. Yes. That, that, yeah, okay. That's the better way of saying it. Look. But anyways. it's. I understand Europeans probably got more stakes because if Russia was 
concave brain enough to start invading NATO countries, it wouldn't be America, or at least first. It'd probably be, a, you know, a NATO country in the middle of Europe, you know, on the border of Ukraine, because Ukraine, it's a tactical position. Right. So, but, you know. But to the point of, like, the sanctions he's imposing, the EU, like, a day ago... Pretty much every country next to Russia, not only even the EU, Switzerland, the country that's been neutral through literally every war that I can remember. All right, you you can remember they were neutral during World War II and Hitler and all that. They imposed a no-fly zone on Russia, so Russia cannot fly any of its carrier planes or any of its commercial airlines. Whoa, Switzerland-based? Yeah, I know. They cannot fly their planes into their airspace. And America decided, or actually Joe Biden mentioned this in the State of the Union, that today he will impose a no-flight zone on all Russian aircraft. So we're behind the the EU and Switzerland by quite a bit. We're taking notes from Switzerland. That's that's kind of sad. That is is pretty sad. Like, Sonny, do you kind of, like, get where we're coming from now? We're taking notes from Switzerland. (laughs) I guess, I mean, I do agree with you guys, like, you know, we shouldn't be, you know, too behind, but I don't think we should be hasty. I I agree, we shouldn't be too hasty with the situation, but that's not the problem. The problem is we're not even in lockstep with Europe. We're behind. (laughs) Significantly behind. And let's point out something, too. If we really want to hit the Russians where it hurts, we gotta go for the oil. Right? Oh, yeah. We, Come on now. We still trade a buttload of oil with Russia today, right now, at this current moment, because we are dependent on Russia to yeah. a certain extent. Right? All, the movement to naturalize our oil production in America and to find more green alternatives that are not fully developed and really can't support us for the time being has led us to de- depend on Russia, much like Germany, but to a lesser extent. And so... Um, Biden had Biden actually has a dilemma right now, right? Everyone's complaining of the high gas prices, right? I'm sure everyone's aware. Oh, yeah. And the problem is, if he really wants to make a stand against uh, Russia, he has to cut trade of oil between the U.S. and Russia. But that will only increase gas prices. <laughs> yes. Significantly. Which will really hurt his... Uh, his poll numbers. He's already in the in the mid thirties right now, so nice. you know he's not doing too well. I mean, it's Biden who's really surprised, but okay, fair enough. In the situation, Biden's kind of between a rock and a hard place. I kind of get there's no real like winning this. No, and I you know. completely understand that too, right? I don't want to be hurting the situation because I'm sure gas affects all of us in some way. Oh right? yeah, let's not be stupid. Come on now. Yeah, so we could totally sympathize with him. But I'm just saying, it's kind of funny like how he's saying, Joe Biden in his State of the Union, that he's leading the way uh, yeah. <laughs> in, into supporting Ukraine. It's kind of, no, he's not. Yeah. The, the Europeans are actually leading the way, let's be fair. For one of the first times in American history, uh, at least to my knowledge, uh, America is being the follower. Yeah. Because... You know? uh, America as a nation was kind of a trailblazer in a lot of the things that we've done, but um, I, I guess uh, we might finally be starting to lose that title, at the very least, with the current presidency. It's not all Biden's fault. Some of it is really just, this is going to be a shitty situation, and there's no fixing that. So, you know, he just has to make the best decision that he can. And I understand that, but yeah. to claim that none of it is Biden's fault is just a little bit cope. Just a little. Well, this is the problem with the whole situation, right? I wouldn't even say, like, I think majority falls on Biden in Ukraine right now. Like, whatever's happening in Ukraine, that's, I would say, like, 85% Biden's fault. But the other 15 comes from other establishment presidents in our past. So if you recall, during the Bush era, Georgia fell. Russia just invaded Georgia, and they took it. If you recall, during Obama, Crimea fell. Russia just invaded uh, Crimea. If you recall, during Biden, 
the Taliban just took over Afghanistan like we had no resistance at all. Because we literally just gave up and dipped. Yeah, and so didn't it's basically even take our equipment with us, lol. Yeah, it's basically just establishment politics. That was the beauty about Trump. Putin didn't know what he should do in the situation when Trump was president because he was so unpredictable, right? You don't want to go into a situation where if you invade a country, you don't know what the unstable president might do, right? Because that's what right. people portray Trump as being unstable. And it ended up kind of working in our favor. Uh, there was this, uh, you, you know, Trump actually did make a statement about this, you know, pointing this out. You know, he's the only president in the 21st century, of which there have not been many, but, you know, he's the only president of this century that during their term... Russia has not invaded another country. Yes. That, when combined with the common notion of Trump being literally Hitler, etc., etc., kind of makes it seem like he was, at the very least, one of the best presidents when it came to foreign policy, if nothing else. And I've been saying that for quite a bit. (laughs) That's, like... uh, kind of um goes in the face of all of the uh you know all the liberals and all the leftists i, I don't i don't like using the word liberal to refer to moderate leftists cuz it's a misuse of the word but you know what i mean yeah uh, those kind of people like crying about how horrible trump is and then there's this and then there's all the other examples of trump actually being kind of based <laughs> Ironically, Trump's foreign policy was the best part of his administration, by far. It's not even close. Um, Was the economy not better? No. I don't think it was that much better. Because if you look at what Trump accomplished, and I know some of this was kind of subsidiary, meaning during his term, things kind of unfolded in his favor. But if you have to look at it backwards, let's analyze the situation, right? Trump came into office, he was getting into a situation where North Korea was being very hostile. Yes. That was sort of driven by him as well, right? Let's not be oblivious. Well, yeah, he was but, he was being, you know, antagonistic, at least a little bit. Right. But he did what no one thought was ever going to happen in a million years. And that was sit down with North Korea's supreme leader, Kim Jong-un, and go into North Korea. He was the first president to ever go into North Korean space. Like and, to walk there. Yeah, and he actually, like was able to set up negotiations again. Right. He also set up the Abraham Accords, which basically, and I know a lot of people defend Obama, but not in the right way. So let me explain. Remember when everyone in the Middle East was basically making peace with Israel, right? And Mm -hmm. that was a really big issue because everyone in the Middle East kind of hates Israel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's only happened because of Obama and a shitty policy in the Iran deal. Everyone recalls when Obama so-called denuclearized Iran and basically opened their economy to the floodgates. What really happened there was Iran was kind of still making nuclear weapons and their economy was growing. And so that kind of unified the Middle East into signing a peace agreement with Israel just in case if Iran ever attacks the Middle East. You know? So it's Obama's fault that the Middle East made peace with Israel, but not for the right reason, you know? Yeah. So Trump was very spectacular in foreign policy, but, you know, and his economy was great, too. I just think it could have been better with more radical measures, that's all. Fair. Yeah. But, um, you know, he, he did a lot of work in deregulating. But the point yeah. is, I guess, to, to wrap it all around, is Trump's foreign policy was breaking records, and Biden's foreign policy is just copying off of uh, the EU cell work. A day late, yeah. I might add. And by the way, uh, and people are going to say like, oh, a day, that's not a long time. Okay, look, Ukraine might fall within a couple hours. A right. day is a lot of time. Let's, when, oh, let's make that clear. When countries are getting invaded, every hour, arguably every minute counts. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think we started this with oil, so let me tr- tie it back. In the State of the Union, Joe Biden said, in a measure to, you know, make America more independent from Russia, he's going to release the deployment of 60 million uh, barrels of oil from our reserve. But that only accounts to three days of consumption. Okay. Bruh. 
and oil prices right after the state of the union actually increased by five dollars in terms of uh the price per barrel so that obviously wasn't a a good response to the to the market it's like wow we've got enough barrels to last the country for three days <laughs> that's not a long time like, and what actually happens is people th this is why the markets reacted that way people were assuming that biden was somehow gonna strangle our oil relationship with russia but that's not gonna happen and that's why the oil prices are rising because people are assuming there will be less demand in the long run yeah um so he actually hurt himself more than he helped himself in that situation well i mean it's biden so it won't be the first time yeah um man this entire like this entire state of the year it was just kind of sad I, I, I feel I like, uh, like, um, like every every president has had like a certain theme. So, um, like Obama's was hope, Trump's was like controversy and outrage, right? Uh, and then Biden's is just like a sad disappointment. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like a lot of people am, feel that. And by spitting facts, though, you are. He's kind of like you know, we all have whenever you you see children, right? And you have multiple children, you always have that disappointment in the group, and that's Biden. Oh my gosh, you're putting it like that. I mean, yeah. hey, he's not. I'll agree with you. He's not been a good president in my eyes for the past uh, what one year? <laughs> one year. I mean, oh, you know. <laughs> Uh, let's go Brandon and all that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, fuck's sake. I mean, hey, uh, I'm pretty sure his worst presence out there in their terms, but then again, he hasn't been done with his term. I and mean, it might go or three, and who knows, Russia <laughs> might own the world. Yeah. Uh, Putin might become our new president. Uh, let's be fair. Then we'll get such a good economy, guys. Yo, cheaper gas prices. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'll agree with Sonny on that. Like, out of all the presidents we've ever had, Biden is not the worst. No, but, no, no. No, but he's definitely, I'd say, I don't know. Fucking no. Top Honestly, 15. I'd argue that, yeah. like... Uh, in the <laughs> bottom team? Yeah. Oh, wait, you're getting confused by his class numbers. You know, oh, sorry. Uh, my bad. Uh. He stopped with his class. How could you forget? <laughs> top of if you class, reverse it. If you reverse it. Exactly. Bottom and top. Okay. <laughs> um... Okay, but I, I will say one other thing. I understand that Biden has a lot of time to either get really better or really worse. And it's probably going to be the second one. But I, I just want to ask, uh, do you guys think that Obama was worse than Biden? Or do you think that Biden uh, was worse than Obama? And when I say, was Obama worse, I mean... Both terms, emphasis on the second, because that's when he did a bunch of the, you know. Right. Sonny, you could go first, because I, I have a really weird answer to this. See, at the time of Obama's term, I wasn't even, like, interested in politics. I mean, not, not even now, I'm kidding. Um, but, um... Why are you I, here? All you talk about is sports. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's not, why I'm here. It's all the reason I'm here, is just to talk about sports. Anyways, as I was saying, like, just all this one year, it's felt so long. Maybe that's due to COVID. Maybe it's due to other factors. But it just felt like it's been so shit. Like, it, my living, it's shit. Gas prices fucking skyrocketed. I feel like, is it, isn't it the highest it's ever been? Yeah, pretty much. So, in those factors, I'm going to have to say Obama was better than Biden. And plus, you know... You gotta support the black men. Pissed up, brothers. Man, so... Okay, but, like... Yeah. But you what, wanna answer this one, Joe? Uh, well, I was gonna say, fair enough. Joe Biden's, you know, inflation is horrible. And gas prices are only going up and up and up. Um, But, like, Obamacare, though. But yeah, it's just Brie Brown Biden care. There's, what do you mean... The, isn't Biden going to bring it back anyway, so... Or if it's not big, already brought back? But, look, this is what I have to say. I think I'm getting at, like, um, at, um, at Chow's point here. This is what I think. 
personally, I think Obama's worse because of the downstream effects he'll have for generations to come. Yeah. Meaning, he, he had he pushed forward in the Democratic Party intersectionality, and I think he actually was more divisive than Trump. So in that regard, I would say Obama. I wouldn't even point against his policy making, although I think it was horrible. I just think what he's done to the Democratic Party and how political tribal, as a result of his party, is, you know, during his tenure, is why he's worse than Biden. I think Biden is just a um, an outgrowth of Obama and I all f- tribalism. I feel like we should really just look at their first years and compare it. Because to look at all of their of Obama's two uh, tenures as president and compare that to Biden's one year, it's just unfair. Because Biden hasn't done... Like, yeah, he's done a lot for us in our eyes because it's like, fuck shit, you're fucking up our country even more. I mean, I feel like we should, like, look at Obama's first year and Biden compare. And at that point, uh, Biden would be worse. Okay, you know I wasn't what? Really I would agree at, with you there. I wasn't really looking at it from an objective point of view. Because, yes, ultimately we just don't have enough information because Biden's not out of office yet. And... We do know that Biden is almost definitely going to be a one-term president. That's what he said. He's not going to run again. Uh, he might go back on that, but I guess the, the important part is that um, we're never really going to have an incomplete answer, a uh, complete answer to that question, because Obama had two terms and Biden is going to basically at max have one if he keeps his word. But I was just asking. From what Biden has done so far, is it worse than everything that Obama has done already? Uh, I, I would still say Obama's done more bad things for downstream culture. But if you're talking about our the first years, I think Obama's a special. So, unfortunately for Obama, he inherited a recession. And although, yeah. like, he wasn't making it better necessarily... Not in terms of policy, but I, I, I'm talking about rhetoric because he's kind of laughing about it. He's trying to uplift the country when the country really just wanted to get back to work. So in that sense, he was poorly timed. His, his, uh, his laughing was poorly timed. Yeah. But, yeah, Biden definitely, in comparison to Obama, had a worse first year. And oh, I, yeah, technically, no. you can't even include Ukraine in the first year because it happened kind of a little, a little bit afterwards. Yeah. But... Even with just the Taliban taking over oh, Afghanistan. Oh, God, that that was so bad. Uh, yeah, and all the so people that views. died. And then, of course, there's all those uh, bills basically control z everything that Trump's ever done when he first entered office. Yeah. And, you know, there's, there's all the things of, like, Kamala just handing him bills, and she's just like, just sign it. <laughs> like, come on. And then all That's... his fucking vacations. Oh, yeah, that... Well, he even took a vacation recently well, during the Ukraine and Russia crisis. Well, like, okay, yeah, but every yeah. president has done that. So, but if you look at Trump, he didn't even have nearly as much vacations. But he, he had a few times going golfing, but not like two week or a couple day vacations with his wife. He's always a hard worker, and I feel like we should admire that about Trump. Fair enough. All right, so that's. Is there anything else important from the State of the Union? Uh, uh, there is uh, one thing that's kind of funny. Okay. That is Nancy Pelosi. Oh, of course. And uh, I mean, like everyone's, everyone knows who she is, not for the right reasons. But Nancy Pelosi, she's a really old congresswoman from California. She's also the Speaker of the House. And she kind of had a really weird moment during the State of the Union. So if you direct your attention to the clip I am highlighting... You shall see Nancy Pelosi doing this weird dance when Joe Biden is mentioning soldiers breathing in toxic smoke from burn pits. One being stationed at bases breathing in toxic smoke from burn pits. <laughs> Many of you have been there. I've been in out of- what does that do? What? She just is gets, she like she plotting? Just, she just oh. get, she just gets up and starts. Rubbing her knuckles on each other. Why? Hey, you know, some people accuse men of doing 
uh, sexual innuendos when they move around their ring, right, on her on their hands. I think that's a sexual innuendo on Biden. She's making advances on him. <laughs> Bro. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, fucking hell. Let's... Well, Look, look at Kabla, bro. Like, <laughs> th- there is just no emotion on that face. Those do not yeah. look like real eyes. I apologize. Well, I mean, a year ago or two years ago, she's the most liberal woman in the Senate. So you know, agreeing with Joe Biden could be hard for. Her. Like, no okay, me. okay. I swear, I'm, I'm just, I'm looking at this clip, right? Okay, Biden. Like always, doesn't he looks like he doesn't know where he is? Kamala looks like a cardboard cutout of a human being, and Nancy, like, looks like she's high. Like, I was just what's about going to say that. on? I, I was like, I was very like, I don't know. I was like, oh, Can I say that? And, and then and then there's and then there's like there's Lockjaw over here at the very end of the clip. Who's this? I don't even. It's I don't even know. <laughs> My guy, my guy, you might want to get that checked out. He has what is that? Uh, the inbreeding jaw. What is it called? The Hasberg jaw. That's what it's called. That's what he has. Why are you making fun of a guy's appearance? Have we looked at ourselves recently? <laughs> what do you mean? We are the pinnacle <laughs> of oh. American culture. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. It gets even better when you start reading the comments. Um. <laughs> Okay, I, I look, it's it's not a person, and this username is like so great, so I'm gonna say it because it's just it's just too good. It's use your brain. That's the Twitter name. <laughs> um, drug tests should be required for Congress members, and then someone underneath that replies and term limits, <laughs> and term you know, limits. Joel Biden has been in Congress longer than my mother has been on this planet. Wait, yeah, 50 years. So, you know. Damn. Just saying. Oh, and, that then, man and then of needs course, turn. Then, of, then of course there's, uh, there's, uh, this girl who's like, um, it's called holding your applause. Man, what a desperate crew. Have a great night. They're standing in support of taking care of soldiers who are victims of burn pits. Is your English interpreter off duty tonight? <laughs> what? Like, I'm sorry. If you interpret whatever Pelosi's doing in that clip as standing in solidarity, you got something else coming to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then there's a reply uh, who's like, So why is she rubbing her knuckles like a geriatric ghoul? <laughs> Brutal. You know, I have an interesting clip for you guys to watch. It's actually pretty funny. So. Um, it's, uh, basically their, uh, what news site, Action News, whatever, uh, I think they're in Philadelphia, and they're talking about robbery, and then they're talking about, uh, old man touching a little girl, and they showed a picture of Biden at the State of the Union. It's not clear what may have been taken, and no arrests have been made. A 71-year-old man is accused of inappropriately touching a 12-year-old girl at the Walmart in West Mifflin Sunday afternoon. According to court... (laughs) 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 Nah! Nah! (laughs) Perfect timing, right, boys? (laughs) Bro... He sniffed. He sniffed too many hairs. <laughs> he sniffed too many hairs. He wanted too many over. cupcakes. He was too greedy. <laughs> oh. I will say. I will say. All right. Biden. He's a clown, and if we're gonna have a clown for a president, at least we can have fun with it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they like they took down the image as well, like at the very last second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just life is amazing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what a time to be alive. Oh, also, uh before we end this part of the podcast about State of the Union, we have to talk about uh Defund the Police. Remember that, guys, oh, yes. from, like, 
Um, a year or a year and a half ago. George Floyd thing, twenty twenty. <laughs> yep. It's you... bigger than black and white. Oh my fucking gosh. Yeah, we all remember that. Oh yeah. It's amazing times. The Democrats were completely not miscalculating their political futures. Totally I legit. Mean, we saw the clips of that one uh, robbery guy shooting kid in New York Street. If you guys remember. Yeah. Uh, but luckily the guy has aim of a stormtrooper and didn't hit ship. Uh, yeah. yeah. Also, I, mean... uh, um, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but ever since the whole defund the police thing kind of happened and then ended like three years, at, uh, sorry, not three years, three months after the riots, there's been a lot of Democrats who have been saying that it was actually the Republicans who wanted to defund the police. Um, yeah, I, I remember. We addressed this in an earlier episode, I believe. Uh, okay, cool. Up, yeah. Okay, well, I, I'm just I'm giving context for people who don't watch our backlog. It happens. Nah, what, what do you mean? All our viewers watch all our videos. All our, I don't know all our viewers watch all of our podcast episodes. <laughs> Come on. Cause, cause they gotta know the lore, bro. They gotta know the sense of liberty lore. M- yeah. may- maybe they'll hide like an ARG element in one of the podcast episodes, and it'll link to the secret invite link to Chow Chat Fifteen, the final. Exactly. God, we're like Destiny Two. So or many like, layers. Or only okay. Friends. Actually, we're like, an, nah. um, we're like an ogre. We have no. A that's lot a of good idea. Like actually, I want to do that. I want to do that. <laughs> And only fans. <laughs> hey, hey, look, no, How no, do you think about I don't it? want to do an only fans. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Hey, yo. What? Hey, yo. No, you yo. just said you want to do it. I mean, think about it. It's, the site's not only for partner traffic. It's also for, like. It's for the fans. For, okay, fine. What are we going to post? What are we going to post? <laughs> All your <laughs> shit. Better yet. Better yet. How about. How about both of you? Um seriously come to terms with the fact that eventually you'll have to tell your parents that you have an OnlyFans. <laughs> okay. Even okay. if it's not for, like, D-Gen shit. Just imagine that that will have to be a conversation you will have to have. Hey, yeah, you think my mom knows what OnlyFans is? You're funny. <laughs> okay. Hey, you think Fair my parents enough. You? And plus, uh, it's like... It's not as bad as having a Reddit a Reddit account. No, no, Reddit is better than OnlyFans. Okay? Reddit is more based. Reddit is bad. Okay, Reddit, Reddit is, is terrible. Reddit, 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 Reddit. But at least, okay, the simp's on Reddit. I at the very least, the only thing they can do is ban people from cringe subreddits, and that's it. But on OnlyFans, yeah, but like. What? That is a conversation we must postpone. Because we're getting <laughs> horribly off track. We could go <laughs> off that for a little while, but Yo, next topic. Come on. Well, yeah. Fans. Well, okay. We we were trying to talk about the defund the police thing because it's yeah. been a year and a half, right? Since since yeah. the riots, uh, and yes, there they were riots, and now the narratives switched because. Biden has said in the State of the Union address that we should not defund the police. Good yeah. job. Good job. He Congrats. finally gets it. Finally gets it, you know. They should get paid more. Wow. Hey. Fund, fund is, the police. That fund. that was no nah, no, nah, you know what? No. Nah. Good job. Good job, you did it. They don't call him President Biden for nothing, you know, he's kind of slow for no, everything. They don't, they don't call him, uh, going back on his word Biden for nothing, you know? Okay, now, but, like, it gets better. Because he didn't just say, defund the police. Or, sorry, he didn't just say, don't defund the police. He said, fund the police. Oh, yeah. Like, like, directly. In direct contradiction to what the yeah. Democratic Party was saying, just... 18 months ago or I guess now it's like 21 because we're in March and it was happening in June but yeah. point we'll see is, goes out. but then homeless people started shitting all over the streets and crime went bonkers because of course it would <clears throat> the police oh, don't have the money to do their jobs they won't do their jobs 
Anyways. And if they're short staffed, how the fuck do you like they're gonna spread all across, you know, their location, their Kike, region? Kike, uh, you have a guy who does all the details because I'm way too lazy to do it. Uh, if you'd yeah. like to give the inside scoop on on the, the defund the police thing, yeah. Okay, so defund the police <laughs> is a movement that still continues. No, no this day. they already know about the defund the police history. Okay. Talk about what happened in the State of the Union. Oh, in the State of the Union, Joe Biden said, clearly, we need to not defund the police, but fund the police. And I then, just said that. Yeah, yes, we sound like but, a broken record now. Wait, 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 this is important. Every Democrat, or not every, but majority, like 95% of Democrats in the room stood up and started clapping. <laughs> Whoa. It sounds like they have a applause sign right next to Biden. Like, applause. <laughs> oh, like, oh, yeah. Applause, the, everyone. Oh, yeah, like in the Shrek movie where it's like the the little the little <laughs> gremlin with the applause sign. It's like, hooray, Biden, good job. Yay. Like, Clap so Biden seems more go- cool. Like, yeah, just do something, please. It's like, brave. Pull numbers around the shitter. Brave. Brave. Also... Let's mention another another thing, another theme of this uh, of the State of the Union. Biden also said he wants to bring manufacturing jobs. No, no, let me say this very clearly to the U.S. Man, this this sounds like an awful lot like Trump. You know what? What not? Trump never had no. Any but Trump was ideas orange, man. of that. Yeah, orange man, bad. You know, I throw out all my oranges Bro. as soon as he became president. <laughs> Bro, what yeah. was that thing we said? Uh, on you know the last podcast, the one that wasn't the, the the live stream, it was twenty five. It's like, bro, or orange people are not people. Orange is not a race, bro. They don't yeah. count. And because of that, Joe Biden can directly quote Trump, and that's fine. But regardless, I thought this was funny. Just going through Twitter, um, Joe Biden or whoever controls his account tweeted. Ford is investing $11 billion to build electric vehicles, creating 11,000 jobs across the country. GM is making the largest investment in its history, $7 billion to build electric vehicles, creating 4,000 jobs in Michigan. And then Elon Musk, my man, he responded with, Tesla has created over 50,000 U.S. jobs building electric vehicles and and is investing more than double GM plus Ford combined. To the president Damn. of the United States. Where yeah. we just talked about Elon getting fucked by California, and he's yeah. been a supplying like the most fucking jobs. Also, he L when plus ratio Biden. About that? Uh, racist scandal. What? Last it was last year. It was the twenty fifth. I I don't remember, but we definitely mentioned that Elon Musk was pretty important to California as he supplied a lot of jobs. Damn, bro, I got fucking stage Biden dementia. No way. <laughs> But uh, you talk about him so much, you know you becoming him. Yeah, I'm God. But he, Elon no, Musk completely L plus ratioed him. Okay, he L plus ratioed. <laughs> God, he got a hundred ten. L plus ratio plus uh, fell off. Uh, plus no no oil. Plus uh, uh, shit, I'm running out of the, the funny Twitter words. Uh, uh, and be a young boy better. I mean, but <laughs> you know what. I, I have them written down in a list. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have them written down in a list. I'm gonna pull it up. Hold on. Teslas Look, have risen in price though. So Biden got 15k likes. Elon Musk got 110k likes. You know. Yeah, but like, who's better? We should have Elon for president. I'm telling you, but he can't be president. Uh, yeah. Why can't he? He's born in South Africa. <sighs> All right. But like Obama was Muslim, so you know. <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on, we all know he was born in the Middle East. <laughs> okay, okay. His, his middle okay. name is Hussein, man. I don't okay. know. Okay, I have, I have the list. Oh, Fell no. off plus ratio plus L plus <laughs> your white plus who asked plus no you plus thread muted plus D plus I can, don't I wish care I plus this didn't guy. ask plus clipped plus cotton four K plus GG. Plus I, NBA young boy better. Exactly, we have the list. We have the list. Don't yeah, ask why good. I have this on my hard drive. It's just wonder what man. else he has is on his hard drive. Hey, yeah, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's well, great. What well, involves animals? 
Hey, yo! <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Chill, man. Yeah. Yo. What? You, do you not have pictures of your own cats? On no. What? What? Or your animals? You're oh, man, weird, I thought you were bro. Shane Dawson. Uh, uh, yeah, nah, nah, <laughs> blocked. Blocked. <laughs> blocked and reported. Nah. Nah, you bro you're breaking TOS. Nah. <laughs> Yeah. Let's okay, continue with the funding. Yeah. Um, so we also have another topic in the State of the Union that relates to money. Oh, I, so love, I love money. Take it away. I love money. All right, guys, ready for his hour rant? Let's okay. go. I'm, my popcorn and <laughs> I'm gonna okay. get my drink. So this is actually part of the State of the Union, but I feel like it's important enough to talk about separately. Because, oh boy. President Biden suggests that pharmaceutical, fuck, pharmaceutical, there we go, companies should cap the price of insulin at $35 a month. Now, to, uh, okay, here's the thing though, right? I don't. I don't, I don't need, uh, I don't need insulin, at least not yet anyway. So I don't, I don't actually know what the struggle is like. So I guess I'm just, I'm a poser. I'm, a, I'm virtue signaling. But, uh, what I do know is that, uh, it's, it's, it's government and it's, government. uh, government bad, uh, the yeah. end. <laughs> That's it. Uh, n n no more thought required. Wait. Government bad. Wait, no hour rant? Uh, what? no, don't worry. Th there'll be an hour rant on something else. Uh, it's just like, I, I don't know why Biden had to say that. Because I, I feel like it'd be a lot better just decreasing inflation and not messing with uh, the insulin market, you know? I mean, it's pretty bad. This market's pretty bad. It's expensive. It is pretty bad. Oh, no, I I'm sure, right? I know, I know that insulin is one of the most expensive liquids on uh, the planet. But, right, uh, the solution is not for the government to uh, artificially limit the price. Because that's not how economies work. That's, that's how you end up with the horror stories. Because, you know, price is supposed to be... Um, uh, okay, price is a lot of things. But one of the things that it is, and I argue this is one of the most important, is it is a signal to the buyer of availability, scarcity, uh, well, scarcity, both the same thing, um, and value, right? So uh, the value one's obvious, but scarcity is a little more important, right? I, I think part of the reason why um, insulin is so expensive is because uh, the healthcare system is just... It's kind of fucked in America. Um, and I, I'm not one of those uh, losers who's like, uh, oh, it's bad because we don't have it for free. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, concave head Brits and uh, Europeans who are like, uh, f healthcare is a human right, etc., etc. I do think that some basic version of uh, free healthcare should be a privilege that we should have as a Western nation. Like, that's that's understandable, right? But, uh, for the most part, I just think that, you know... And this is gonna really shock everyone in the audience. Government bad. Boom. I know. If, Mic drop. If, oh, whoops. If I had to say something really quickly about this... Yeah, go this, ahead, go ahead. Um, I know what Chow's trying to say, right? When you look at a market, you have an equilibrium. Basically, what the producer is willing to produce at, at a cost, and what the buyer is willing to pay at, at a cost, right? Yeah. And once they come closer and closer, that's what we call the equilibrium price, because that's what the producer and the buyer agree to pay for, right. or to sell and pay for, whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yes, you don't want to mess with the markets in that way. I will agree with, with Sonny that insulin is very overpriced in America. It is. But not for... But not for the reasons that most people think. Right. Most people think that because Canada can actually put a price, um, a price ceiling on insulin, we could as well. 
that's not exactly the case because um, every other country kind of piggybacks off America's um, off, off America's infrastructure in terms of medical, right? A lot yeah. of the, if you really look at it objectively, we make the most discoveries in terms of new medicines out of any country in the world, and that's because because our we're the most system, privatized. Whoa, what a exactly. surprise! And if once we actually put price ceilings on products that will actually de-incentivize producers to make products because you're actually setting a precedent that if you sell a product for too high of a price, whatever the outside factors may be, they will not produce as much. Therefore, they won't invest as much money to finding new products to cure new diseases or past diseases or whatever the case may be. Yeah, exactly. Economies are like, okay, economies have flow, right? And when governments try to intrude and regulate and manage economies, especially something as vital uh, as healthcare, but this goes for all economies, arguably, right? Um, it ruins the flow. And so it slows everything down, and so um, it creates more scarcity. That's just how economics works. <laughs> Right, and no one could predict how the market will work in any way. Anyone tells you, oh, if we do this and we'll expect this result, they're probably lying to you because no one could predict the market in a very credible way. You saw this, There's a this is a very famed economic um, um, lesson most economics teachers teach to their students, and that is of Valentine's Day and flowers, or I can't, is it chocolates? Regardless. So at, at a time... Most people gave flowers to their spouses or to their loved ones on Valentine's Day. Now, for whatever reason, um, flowers were, they had an embargo put on them and they were way more expensive, so less people could buy them. And so many economists argued that they would purchase a product that is very different from flowers. But they didn't know what product they would purchase. And what they purchased, what men purchased or women purchased, was chocolates. And that was a direct result because of flowers. But no one realistically bought chocolates for their loved ones on Valentine's Day before flowers became so expensive. And I know that might sound weird in retrospect, but it really was the case back then. And that goes to show that, you know, markets are unpredictable and no one who claims to know what will happen will actually know what will happen. It's just not a thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I, uh, I think I kind of lost the plot there for a sec. Basically, whoever tells you that they know what will happen for sure is lying to you. Yeah. Marcus, news, Marcus. news, come on guys. It gets over with, haha, ha, money, markets, economy, alright. Yeah, okay. <laughs> alright, ne next, next funny to- oh, hold on, wait. There's one more thing. Another another Twitter thread. We're basically Twitter news now. We're the Twitter okay. police. Okay, somebody You're says healthcare should be fucked. Healthcare <laughs> <laughs> should be. Okay, so one person on Twitter says healthcare should be free. Second person, nothing is ever free. Based, you end up paying it in taxes. Based and government build, uh, and then the third person says. Yes, and I'm fine with that. Completely missing the point that it's not just you paying with the taxes, it's also everybody else who doesn't need your health care. So you're just forcing everybody to chip in a little bit for your problems. Which isn't fair to I was like skill issue, not gonna lie. It should be better. Exactly. Be it's, a just... it's a skill issue for the for the person who says healthcare should be free, bro. Just pay for it, not the hard. <laughs> Yeah, That's not how it's so <laughs> Well, guess what, bro? That's a skill issue for the fact that I misinterpreted what you said. Just be more clear <laughs> with your argument. Sounds like you have a skill issue of interpreting what other people say. So, that so you both skill have skill issue issues. No, now you have Shut a skill the issue for you not recognizing our skill. You play Destiny 2 for a living. Don't, you don't bro, even have no ground. None. You're literally on Destiny 2 right now, bro. What, what are you even on? You're bro? literally <laughs> playing Destiny 2 right now, dude. You're literally Actually, playing Destiny 2 while we're recording. the record show, Sony is playing <laughs> Destiny 2. <laughs> nah, <laughs> bro. I don't know bro. what you mean, bro. You're both <laughs> playing <laughs> Destiny 2. No way. Skill issue? I'm not playing Destiny 2, Sony. Yes, you are. 
No, I don't know. I have screenshots. I have screenshots. Okay. Do you have timestamps as well? Yeah, I have timestamps. I have timestamps too. I mean, right, uh, the question is, do you have the timestamps? That's, that's yeah, it's what I just answered. <laughs> if you don't, that sounds like a skill issue. That sounds like a skill issue, like, of all you guys, because you guys are still on this topic. It's a skill issue that we're still stalling. <laughs> it's a skill issue that we're just pushing, you know, the timer, you know. Yeah, we're surprised that you're still fucking watching. Why the fuck uh, are you still watching this? Uh, uh, COVID re restrictions are scientifically being relaxed before the state of the year. How the fuck is that scientifically? <laughs> How well, the fuck is that science restrictions being lifted? What? What? Bro, nah. at, at this point, COVID restrictions are just like. I don't know. They're just kind of making shit up as well, they go along, and they're just if you think about you know. it, you know, right? Ben Shapiro was right. We were li gonna have to live with you know fucking COVID. Right. He was right. We were from the very from the beginning. Start. I was I was saying this from the very beginning. COVID is probably just gonna have to be a factor of our lives for a little yeah. while, and I have a little while, just our whole lives. I don't know if COVID's gonna be here forever. I mean, the flu is. The flu has been. Uh, but it's... So it's just going to be always mutating. Mm. I don't think it's the same. But it might be a while. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> restrictions. Let's talk about those. Yeah. Kaika, take it away. Um. So, you know, as we all know, blue states tend to impose mass mandates. Red <clears throat> states are free. And I just want to point out all West Coast states, so California, Oregon, and Washington, in some way relaxed their COVID mandates. So in California, they're not requiring children to wear their masks in school. Um, and I think that will take into effect next week. March 3rd, if I read correctly. Oh, is no, it March, March 12th, my bad. Okay. Next so, Saturday. So I was right, next week. Um, and that's the same with Oregon and Washington. And in New York, ironically... Um, their mask mandates for schools are being lifted literally the day after the State of the Union, which is Lol. tomorrow, the 2nd of March. Wait, who? Sorry, you cut out there? <laughs> no, wait, who's... Who? Who? <laughs> Sorry, you guys cut out there? <laughs> who? 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 Uh, you guys keep on going, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Bro, RTC connecting, no way. Yeah, Discord is really lagging. Wait, who? Nah, but like, who, though? Nah, but, but like, who? who? But, like, but, like, who's lifting your restrictions? Yeah, like, who? Who should answer your question? Who? You. Who? 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 We're gonna be out of this. Alright, let's just <laughs> move on. We're gonna be for a fucking hour. Yeah, it, was a, it was a small topic, anyway. We still have two fucking pages. <laughs> oh, God. Let's go. Let's go. We, everybody loves the Sons of Liberty podcast. <laughs> and we're, I, I have a feel. We I'll are always soon. on time. We are always on topic. And we never go on large tangents of us just saying who over and over again. I feel a chow rant coming on the next topic. Okay, well, what's the... Okay. I might I might do a small rant about it, but I feel like Kaika's got to take the lead with the first part. Wait, wait and now yeah. I, I, I know which of his rants is going to come. Never mind. Okay. It's another one. Sonny, do you want to introduce this one? I think you want me to kill myself. <laughs> you got this. What? No. Fine, fine, if you ask. <laughs> okay so in uh, uh, you know there's a there's a war in ukraine russia's attacking blah, wait blah, really blah, blah. yeah really? i know crazy I, bro, right guys I, I honestly thought hawaii was attacking the u.s wow that's crazy a state is attacking the united states it's crazy <laughs> self-inflicted harm anyways so Sounds like our generation what a lot of people were fearing the most of in ukraine is actually coming to fruition fruition right now and that is Innocent people are being killed, and cities close to Kyiv are being striked, Kyiv being the capital of Ukraine. So this, uh, this is just for Skill Twitter, issue! I'm no, I'm playing, I'm playing. My fucking gosh, that's so bad. Bro, that's like, it's like as bad as fucking Applebee's commercial. Damn. So this is coming straight from Twitter, and Twitter oh, gets best all Best source, best source. Like, not from a Twitter user, but literally from Twitter. 
Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. So, Twitter said this, like, on their little notification thing. I'm quoting them. Multiple people were killed when a Russian missile hit homes in the city of... I can't even pronounce that. It starts with a Z and ends with an R. I could actually try to... Zo... Zo... Tumor? Wait. wait. I don't know. I, I, I got sure. this, guys. I, I'm the... No, no, I got this. No, I got this. I got this, guys. Where is it? Is it in one of the links? Uh, it's one of the... I'm, I'm highlighting it. No, I got... Wait, what? You highlighting where? Oh, I got this. Okay. I am the the language... Foreign language master in this podcast. I got this. Zitomir. Zitomir. What? Zitomir. Zitomir. Oh, it's Zitomir. Okay, got it. Ah, uh, see, I basically got it. Okay, so in Zatomer, um, homes were hit <laughs> in Ukraine, and um, on Tuesday, Russian forces struck civilian sites near the capital of Kiev, including Kiev TV, which is kind of like their uh, one of the big news anchors in in Kiev, and a Babin Yar Holocaust memorial site, killing five people, which is very sad. Uh, another lethal airstrike on Tuesday, which is today, hit directly in front of a government building in Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv. More than 600,000 people have fled Ukraine to neighboring countries, according to the UN High Commissioner for Refugees. So the situation is definitely worsening by the minute, and that's why it's important that Biden is not a day behind the EU. So, you know, there's that. Ciao. Ciao. I'm pretty sure you kind of have something to explain as well in this huh? next point. Uh, you have, like, images you want to talk about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh... <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I feel like I can't uh, explain this without showing... I'll put it up on the screen. Yeah, put Don't it worry. up on the screen. It is necessary. <laughs> Biden's foreign policy be like, Now, Mr. Putin... If you cross that line, there will be consequences. I'm serious, Vladimir. Not one <laughs> more step. <laughs> he just keeps walking. <laughs> like, uh, okay, look. There's a lot of things that we clown on Biden for, and we've already kind of teased at this when we were talking about the State of the Union. This shit just wouldn't have happened if Trump was in office. It wouldn't. Right. Russia would have waited until the next president. Because, I mean, Russia did wait for the first four years. I mean, it's very obvious that Russia is being very tactical about this entire situation. Well, at least somewhat tactical. Not tactical with the reputation, but I don't think they really care. Like, they waited until Biden was president because they knew that they could get away with it. And, I mean, they kind of are. I don't know. This entire situation is just... It's just kind of funny. Like, assuming we don't, like, die in a nuclear fireball uh, because of this, which, you know, we probably won't, but who knows. Uh, assuming that doesn't happen, this is just going to be kind of funny. Not, like, you know, what's going on with you to Ukraine. It's not funny that... You know, Ukraine is being invaded. It's just funny how everybody, especially America, especially Biden, is handling it. It's just like, okay, okay, Russia, stop it, stop invading. So just don't listen. I'd almost, yeah. I'd almost imagine like a Photoshop edit of this image, but Putin just like has AirPods in, <laughs> and he just turns around and he's like, uh, "Sorry, I don't speak broke." <laughs> he just keeps walking. <laughs> so when we're ta if we're talking about pictures, we might as well talk about the lovely Ukraine's Twitter account. Now I don't know who is control in control of Ukraine's Twitter account, but whoever it is needs a raise. Okay. Are they being so, based? They are being indeed based. All right. So let's see this. The, these are legitimate things that Ukraine tweeted out. So um, I put this in the Sons of Liberty chat. So this is something we can only see. Well, I'll okay, put up the first picture. But the thing is, I can't see it without fucking up the oh, video. Oh, the script. You're right. I'm small brain. Yeah, you are you small are brain. Very small brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the point is, Ukraine is kind of making shit posts, 
Is it Hitler? Hitler? Yeah, Wait. that is that is Hitler cradling Vladimir Putin. And they tweeted that out. What? <laughs> Get it, guys? It's it's funny because it's Putin short. Yeah, it's it's Hitler. Now, also, where's the joke? <laughs> what, what do you mean? Like, do you not get it? I, no, I don't. I guess I'm just being a boomer. I don't know. So that's Vladimir Putin on the bottom right. Yeah. That's Hitler. Yeah. And he's cradling Vladimir Putin. Yeah, where's the joke? <laughs> okay, you know what? I understand what you're saying. <laughs> it's, okay. It's not where's the funny, funny? But it's funny how they tweeted it out. Oh, how... oh, right, yeah, okay, so this was from the official Ukraine, okay, okay, that's kind of funny, I guess. But they also tweeted out, <laughs> I put the link, Yeah. they also tweeted out, tag at Russia and tell them what you think about them. It's it's interesting how, uh, uh, like, countries have their own Twitter accounts, what's, what's the point of that? I don't know, I feel like Ukraine's doing a good job at it, though. Okay, I, I love, I love Russia's, though. Because, oh god, like, that is some, oh that's some irony, oh no. If you look on Russia's uh, Twitter bio and profile, it's like all, um, it's all nice and bubbly and whatever. There's just, oh. And there's emojis in there. Oh god, no. And, and the U in Russia is a heart. God. Hey. You know how it says home to more than 190 ethnic groups? Soon, it might be 191. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, but their Twitter profile is just amazing. Yeah, it's... Oh, God. And they, like... They respond to a lot of shit posts as well. Like, I, I'm shitting you. Okay, you have to understand this. They made a tweet, and this is just them being based. Yeah. I'll put this in the script. Oh, please. Where, uh, they made a tweet, I put it there, saying, Stand with the people of Ukraine, now accepting cryptocurrency donations, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and USDT. So they put their Bitcoin and Ethereum wallets. Nice. You know what? You know, that's fair. That's fair. They're, they're in based. a time of need. Nah, you know, nah, you know what? Where are the Ukraine NFTs? I want to see <laughs> some landscapes of Ukraine and I want them to be NFTs. I will buy that shit. Come on. I just want to... Like, you could look at their wallet and how much it has. Um, but yeah, it, it just... It's amazing how... How in tune they are with their culture. Just saying. Crazy. Uh, let's see. Right now they have a 211 Bitcoin in their wallet. Ah. Uh. Yeah, that's how much is that? What, how much is a Bitcoin worth right now? Oh, put Kike in his office. Come on. So that is almost one billion dollars. That's a lot of money. Chump change. Hey, that's still better than nothing. So I applaud them. Let's see their uh, ETH wallet. ETH. Yeah. Oh. Crypto yeah, no, bro ETH moment. Moments. They have three... No, that doesn't sound right. Do they have a bored ape? I guess they only have 15 ETH. Oof. Which is still $300,000, but, you know. Oof. Hey, at least they're getting a lot of money from Bitcoin donations. But, like, yeah. do they have a bored ape, though? <laughs> no, ape. that's the question, though, right? What if they have a Ukrainian bored ape? Oh, I'm stupid. They received right. almost 2,700 e Ethereum, but they spent a lot of it. Oh. So. Yes, the, the, so, good job. Yeah, so they have way more than $300,000. Yeah, yeah, come on. You can't make those errors here. This is Sons of Liberty. We're so prestigious. You can't make that shit, you know, doing that shit. Yeah. So well, well, we're, we're, just so, we're just so cracked. Exactly. We're not CNN, which will... Okay. <laughs> In a bit. That is eight million dollars, but you know, better than nothing. I mean, hey, that can buy you a can of soup. Hey, that could seriously shelter a lot of people. So, the fact that they've 
taking advantage of this is great. Okay, so as long as we're talking about Russia versus Ukraine, because this, this probably should have been the thing we were leading with, because it's easily the most important thing uh, we were going to be talking about today. Okay, can we talk about the ghost of Kiev yet? Uh, okay. Should I don't I... know anything about it, so you guys explain it. Okay, well, right. well, there's actually a post on the Ukrainian Twitter account all about him. Oh, I call the, the official Ukrainian Twitter. He tweeted it out, Ukrainians are grateful for, to this hero with brass balls. Very epic. Who's having Russian aircraft for breakfast. <laughs> Just amazing. Godspeed and happy hunting. Ukraine is so based. Like, come on. Come on. I'm telling you, their Twitter is amazing. <laughs> uh, I mean, with the Ghost of Kiev, I feel like it's... Eh. Like, there's clips of him chewing down. Hold on, what was the you shot chewing down, down the R seventy? Yeah, ten the SU thirty five jet in the clip that's showing in the video. Uh, he's using uh, Ghost Kiev is using a Mi uh, Mig six twenty nine while using a R seventy three infrared homing missile. So I mean, hey, that takes skill to use like that kind of. Um, jet? I think it's jet, or is it a fighter? I think it's a fighter. It's a fighter jet. Uh, two totally different things, guys. Come on. Because uh, I heard that they're hard to vote for mobility. Uh, America obviously having the F-18, F-35, which is one of the best, if not the best, fighter jets due to the speed and vers vers versatility and their fighting capabilities. But, you know, good for the Ukraine. And I want to mention something. This is tweeted out by a guy or a person because everything that's tweeted on Ukraine's Twitter is from Twitter for iPhone. So you know that's a legit person and not like <laughs> some bullshit Joe Biden advisor writing the shit out. Because yeah. whenever you look at Joe Biden's tweets, it's like Twitter from whatever. Like I think it's Stacks or something. Stacks? Some bullshit like oh, that. yeah, because Stacks is like a document thing it's like google docs yeah, let me ah, take a look got it you can download it on your computer and type it i don't know why you stacks maybe it's i don't know harder to get into here oh uh, well his his legitimately just says the white house that's the source oh so nice. you know okay you, you know it's not from, like, you know, uh, organizations from one guy. So that's always cool. I mean, he has a whole fucking PR team. Well, Ukraine has probably has one fucking guy in a, a bomb shelter <laughs> typing this shit. Yeah. I mean... Hashtag based. Whoever made that fucking video, pick better fucking music. You'll get a better fucking response. Eh. Speaking of music and sounds... Oh, uh, let's talk about Applebee's. Oh, my oh Applebee's! Place. Applebee's my favorite place. so mid. Alright, so <laughs> Applebee's made this commercial, and it's very, uh, how do I say, a uh, fucked commercial. Is it? And uh, as I said earlier, it includes CNN and the Ukraine and Russia incident. So let's let's give it a watch and let's get yeah, our let's yeah. get okay, okay, our reactions. I'm, I'm watching this, I'm watching this. We'll go inside and in the capital of Kyiv, as air raid sirens are ringing out this morning, much more reaction and insight from CNN's chief international anchor, Christiana Amanpour. That's up next. And a little bit of chicken fry. Cold beer on a Friday night. A pair of jeans that fit 
just right. And the radio. Get five bonus wings for one dollar with any handcrafted burger. Only at Applebee's. Jesus Christ. You gotta love the guy <laughs> dancing with a cowboy hat. And a you little bit got... of chicken fried. You just, uh, you just gotta, you know, love it and hate it at the same time for the timing and his shit. Like it's, it's funny, but poor time, man. For yeah, like this was released what Super Bowl? I don't think it was Super Bowl commercial, but I know it was like around there, a couple days, maybe a couple days after. God, uh, oh no, th- 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 this conflict, nah. <laughs> the conflict in Ukraine is really heating up. Just like our fried chicken tenders. Get it with our cold beer <laughs> special on Fridays. Now at Applebee's. <laughs> That's Man. fucked. This war is brought to you by Applebee's and their one dollar wings. Oh. And they teamed up with CNN? Oh my gosh. Of course they did it with CNN. <laughs> Uh, the most trusted name in use. Yeah, of course, of course. But come on, we gotta have a little bit of chicken in our lives. Am I right? Hey, you're not wrong. Come on. I you love gotta have chicken. cold beer on the side. Grief and Wild despairs. Driving. Grief and despair are nature's most powerful appetizer. Look it up. What are these comments, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh no. <laughs> well, now that we've uh, viewed that, you know, very hilarious but horrific uh, commercial. Oh no. Actually have some... Oh no. There's a couple more. Careless, I mean... shameless capitalism. Well, <laughs> capitalism in a nutshell. Got him. Owned. There's another guy. Capitalism, baby. <laughs> I'm so intelligent. I'm gonna blame capitalism. <laughs> yeah. God. Nah. Oh my gosh. What? What? What's, what's this guy? Wait. Oh, whatever. Stupid. Alright then. We're yeah, the... screw the lives of others. Capitalism has to keep moving. Hiya! I'm glad this blew on their faces. Also, shame on the news directing them to allow this to happen. Why is it capitalism's fault? Oh, why is it. You know, you know what's funny? This account, this um, like comment says History has proven that whenever America gets involved in foreign affairs, we make the things. Worse, R- R- Rose, W R O S C. Mean worse, fucking read. Anyways, uh, he continues saying the most sensible thing for America to, to do is get some discount wings. You know what? I'm gonna have to, um, not agree with you there because wing stops better. Anyways, yeah, all right. I think we should move on. To the next serious videos that we're about to see. Very serious. I mean, they are. We will take them very seriously. Okay, first Uh, one. Uh, A telecom tower has just been hit by Russians in Kiev. Значит, Дорогожичи обстреляны, друзья. Дорогожичи обстреляны. Все легли! Легли! Легли к зданию и легли дальше от стекол! Ближе к земле, дальше от стекол! Может еще один удар быть нанесен! I believe it's the same tower that we were talking about earlier. That oh, uh, I think it's the Kiev TV tower that we were talking about. Perhaps <laughs> that's scary, man. Yeah, yeah. like like it's like right there, and people always have to go hide, get under cover, and 
Yeah. Really fucked. You can see an old lady, you know, having a hard time getting undercover and yeah. away from the debris. And you can even hear them say, like, lay down, get on the get on the ground. It's really scary. It's yikers. Indeed. Anyways, next one. Second. Next oh, one. no. It's not what I wanted to do. Uh, Alright, next video. A Russian tank is crushing a... Oh, Jesus Christ. A Russian take a, a Russian oh tank my God. is crushing Ukraine. Yeah. Jesus. Oh. He's just crushing it. Oh God. And is it okay? What what am I saying? It's a fucking tank. I think this guy actually survived. Well How? I don't know, but I read that somewhere that I that, got you're run talking over. about a is it another uh, one? Different, different. My guy! That was an no, old man. Whoever that was, was in that man. car just got pancaked, bro. How because this isn't the first time it's happened? Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, the other instance that... Oh, I know the guy's... Called... This guy's alive, actually. What is it this one? I just sent a picture in the... Yeah! Store. Okay. Was that on purpose? No shit, it was on purpose. That's <laughs> the guy. That. You think the tank just, was just, like, just ran over that car on purpose? Yes. <laughs> he went Christ. straight for him. Alright, yeah, that's all man. Yep. I don't know. Damn. That is fucked. He d it, the, the tank just swerved. There's no maybe way he that was, was drifting. Like yeah, I mean, maybe. You, but there's two possibilities we can look at this here. It's there's a Russian guy <sighs> hating on Ukraine or it's Ukraine trying to make propaganda against uh, Russia to make other countries want to join in and help the efforts because their people's like feeling bad for them. I doubt it would be propaganda because like this, this guy doesn't even civilian, look right? doesn't mean anything. You don't know that. I mean, it sounds like it's from a civilian. You know, with nowadays editing, you don't know. Plus, this guy doesn't look that her at all. I don't see any, you know, any harm done to him. Obviously, his car is fucked, but oh you no, know. you never know. It's, you know, it's war tactics. You know, you know. I get every sort of benefit on your side. Anyways, let's uh, go to the next clip. In yeah. Kharkiv, the occupiers carry out massive airstrikes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that is. Oh. One minute it's there, the next minute it's not. Jesus Christ. Not pretty. The war is not pretty. There were cars in that in that bombing. Like yep. that got directly hit. Holy shit. Yeah. This is gross. It is. But... Yeah. Just think of that you're attacking civilians. That yes, some are taking arms against your military. But it's not going to be the ones just driving around in their cars. Acting at their yeah. normal lives. Or no, yes and no. Whatever's close but... to normal. But... It does. It still doesn't give them right to attack civilians. Yeah. There's not. There's not for sure that every citizen in Ukraine is gonna 
attack him. Like, there's been instances of uh, people talking to the Russian, trying to convince him to leave, like civilly and with diplomacy. Um, so, is that? That kind of looks like a fuck situation. All right, so let's talk about sanctions in Russia. So, I think Apple, the company is doing a lot in terms of sanctions that the U.S. is not doing. Yeah. In a statement to BuzzFeed News, I know. Oh, God. We're using BuzzFeed. Why? Who uses that more? Bro, all I use it for is, like, the, oh, BuzzFeed what, Harry Potter par- what Harry Potter character am I? Like, what, fuck. That's what people teaching. use it for, like, what, what character am I? I? What, tra- what kind of cake do I like? I don't fucking know. Ask yourself. Don't. Something that's fucking quiz. Yeah, I know. Cringe. But this is actually legitimate reporting here. Um, in a statement to BuzzFeed News, Apple, the company, said it has, quote, paused all product sales in Russia, end quote, and that its payment platform, Apple Pay, has been, quote, limited, end quote. Earlier this week, Apple also confirmed that it no longer supports Russian bank Novi Com Bank, and Russian citizens have reported issues uh, with using the service Apple Pay. So they're taking legitimate steps in Russia there, which is always nice. Yeah. But let's talk about a funny sanction. So this might be this might be weird to a lot of people. But on Twitter, this this is really bad. On Twitter, there are reports that Pornhub got banned in Russia. Like you just they sanctioned Russia. Okay, and this is the the little picture they used. Alright. I'll put it up on the screen. Now, this is fake. I think this is just an age verification, because this is 18. I don't know how to read Russian. Um, no, but- I do. I got this. Sorry, guys. Uh, you are blocked. Um, you have to be 18 and not Russian mm-hmm. to access our Damn. site. Um, yeah. Rush- yeah, that's what, that's what it says. That's what it says. But regardless, right, uh, this is not true. This is fake. A lot of People if I, I know I'm, I'm cringe for saying this, but people have fact checked this. Okay. And I just have the question for you guys. How detrimental would it be if Pornhub was banned in Russia? What? You heard me. How detrimental would it be to if who? Pornhub to Russians? I don't know. Like, uh, you think this would actually do something? No. You gotta keep no. Their, no. You gotta keep their, their men in, very enthusiastic, you know? They gotta they gotta get their, you know, their thing on. Pornhub's There's the, no one woman. of the most visited websites on the planet. Yeah. Yeah, that tracks. Uh, no, bro. I think, uh, I think, I named one more, bro. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> X videos gets visited more. I, I think, think you're right on that. But yeah, it's one of the most more. visited uh yeah. platforms on the world still i think it's like right behind it i think it's like in the top 10 because i know youtube is like really up there i think it's top three i'm just saying like how funny would it be if it got banned and then a lot of russians started complaining and then it's like civilian population just started revolting god like, would that, would be, that would be I'd hilarious I'd be imagine hilarious. You know imagine if the invasion stops because of the horny no way <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I think that'd be great. That is funny. That's yeah. great. You know, good, good strategy. Good strategy. Wait, who? What? What is? What country is this company based off? I like based in. Pornhub. Yeah. I don't even know. America, probably right. You think? Because that's where the big. That's where the big industry is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm definitely not switching that up. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right comments do your work okay you know you let us know in the comments below um all right is that it that's all there is for that topic all right now we let's go to our last topic. last topic very last and then we're ending the episode and then forever we're all retiring um sorry to tell you guys this we're all retiring no we can't retire until and now we're doing only episode. lives i'm kidding no. only fans no! We're not doing <laughs> Sense of Liberty <laughs> only fans. <laughs> what do you mean? Are you are you telling me that sex work is not real work? 
It's not. Wait, why, are you to say that we're, yes. why are you trying to say that yes. we're going to do oh sex work? Why are you saying yeah. that we're going? Why are you saying that we're going to do that? <laughs> oh no! Anyways, yeah. Let's go on with this. We've gone long enough in this episode. Let's go with our final. Um, wait, let topic. me change. Let me change this title real quick. Anyways, last topic. <laughs> so uh, Bungie is cringe. Okay. The best video game company that produces the best game, Destiny Two, tweeted out. Our hearts, is mid. our hearts are with <laughs> our friends good. and families affected by the events in Ukraine. We will be donating 100% of the proceeds of our first 48 hours of our Game to Give drive to humanitarian aid efforts in response to ongoing conflict. Why, why don't they just do the whole everything? Uh, because they also donate to all other charities. So they want to be fair to their other commitments. All right. I mean, why couldn't they just give all the money they got from Witch Queen? <laughs> or yeah, from the deal that they yeah. got from Sony? Yeah, communism is great, right, guys? Yeah. Capitalism yeah. is better, though. Uh, yeah, th- Anyways. Okay, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a good way to sign off. Yeah. Uh, Ciao. Good. Do the outro. Okay, all right. Well... Hey, uh, uh, goodbye. You worry about leaving a better planet for our kids. How about leaving better kids for our planet? Entire generation offended at everything. Getting mad that a human thinks all lives matter. We don't need black or white or left or right. What we need is common sense. We need balance. We're all in the same boat. Why are you trying to make holes? If they sink, we sink. This is madness.